What's up everyone, Pally here, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Walson and what I feel would be some minor things that they could bring into the game. Believe me, I understand fully well that it's only halfway through the beta. Anyway, here are some things that I'm hoping end up inside the, uh, the full release of the game. So, first of all, from my 10 hours or so playing the game, reaching level 17 or 18, I can't remember. Anyway, I've had time to now dive into all of the aspects of the beta so far. Let's talk about housing. I think there needs to be a bit more focus on such things as world bosses and world events. Now, this could be something that's going to be implemented later on in the game when it's fully released. However, world bosses doing certain world events should merit you some sort of trophy or item that you can take to your house and actually show off to other players players or keep for your own personal gain. Now this is a pretty cool and exciting feature that I haven't seen in many games, especially the ARPGs. Now an example that I've just got written up here would be like, um, you know, you go to a specific cave and there is a hidden achievement, you basically pull a lever and it starts sending waves upon waves of mindless little zombies and there's like a few harder ones in there as well. And you've got to kill like say 500 zombies in 3 minutes and you end up with like a zombie carpet to put inside of your, your house. Now that to me sort of tells you to go to quest zones and areas of the world that you wouldn't really explore again once you've completed the quests in those areas. So it's drawing players back to the original areas to try and get them to redo these events, which means they spend more time doing these older content things for something that they can use in late game or mid game, depending on how the leveling structure and everything would work. Plus, I think it would be really fucking cool to be able to walk into your house and see ghoul heads and, and it'd be cool to have like a casket sitting on a wall with a gravedigger head on it. You know, that'd be fucking sick to see. So I hope they implement something like that into the game. Next topic is the talent tree. Now, forgive me for mentioning anything about the talent tree, but I have a few things that I would love to see in this game. So, taking the talent tree, make it slightly more like Path of Exiles, and I mean that in the slightest hint of in-depth class builds, more or less along the lines of, you can make a Warlock, for example, that does toxic damage and has life steal. Now, in saying that, you could also lean towards more of like a Necromancer build, so you could have a couple of zombies up and running at a time. Um, you could also make like, a, for example, an Unholy Paladin type class. So, a Paladin that focuses a lot on defense but at the same time does a lot of uh, life steal damage or, or something like that. You could also play around with different hunter class types, you play around with different barbarian or warrior types as well as making like a healing class. So if multiplayer is actually implemented into this game, you have a, a viable healing class to play with. So that means dying isn't so much of an option and a burden. Now I would also like to see added as well with the talent tree, rerolls on your spent talent points. Now that could be in the form of like a fountain that you can go go and visit and you spend a hundred thousand gold you get two points back or a scroll of some sorts or, or some sort of currency that you or, or a world placement that you can use to re-roll your abilities because i know in my main character i sort of just breeze through it i was like okay i'm just gonna be a magic class but then i realized hey there's other specs and and talent builds that i should be implementing that are now too late in the game so i would like to see something like that in in the future for talent trees and being able to build your ideal class even if you've accidentally fucked up in the processes of making your dream build. Now, one critical thing that I have seen quite a bit on forums and other YouTube videos and all that sort of stuff is the game needs a bit more noise. Now, it is very high up there with audio quality, I enjoy traversing through the world, I enjoy the sounds of the spells, the monsters being killed, and all of that sort of shit, but I'm not a reader. Now I can understand, yes, there is a very high population of people that enjoy the reading aspect of these sorts of games, but my attention span is, as soon as I see text, I just click skip, and that therefore hinders my uh, experience in doing world quests or side quests or whatever. So voice acting needs to be a thing. At least... For the main story quest. Now in saying that, it would also be good to have world bosses if they be end up being implemented, to have a little bit of battle dialogue, you know, like they're grunting and groaning and screaming you'll never defeat me and all that sort of stuff. It would just make it a little bit more immersive. And then having NPCs, so you could walk up to them and without having to open up a dialogue, you could just hear them sort of chattering amongst themselves, make like an area of proximity for dialogue. Now in saying that, if you go to a certain NPC and they sound like they've got something interesting for you to listen to, you hit talk to them and they end up sending you on side quests. Now those side quests could be simple shit like, you know, go to this cave and explore around and find the hidden treasure chest. Once again, implementing that with world mechanics 
so there's levers and there's buttons and there's trapdoors and there's certain puzzle elements to every dungeon in relation to this you could end up unlocking a treasure chest in an old part of the world where you would never really need to go back i feel as well that you could also have villain npcs so they could be working with like some sort of behind the scenes cult or group of thieves or something like that where they say hey there's this cool treasure chest over here in the woods so you go and you find this place in the woods and then you end up getting basically ambushed and and ganked because it was a setup it'd be cool to have those sorts of things and then you end up killing like the head thief dude from the woods and then you go back to the town and you talk to the original npc and he's like how dare you ruin my plans and then he ends up demon type thing he's been working behind the scenes this whole time and then taking that idea you could also kill this demon npc and then run it back into having his head as a trophy in your player house you know small shit like that i could i could digress about this for fucking hours but that's what i would love to see in this game because that would make me want to go back to the old places in the world and explore them and feel like i have accomplished something now two more things and i'm done enchanting there needs to be an enchanting system in this game there is nothing worse than grinding for hours to get one piece of equipment and then find out that it has for example in this case umbra regeneration when you want fury regeneration there needs to be a way to implement a change on items like armor and weapons to stop these things from being so set in stone now take a leaflet out of diablo's page where you can only change one stat you, you know you can just keep re-rolling and re-rolling and re-rolling this one stat over and over again until you eventually get the thing that you want that involves effort that involves the grind that keeps people that are hardcore wanting to play your game now, in saying that, gem crafting. Now, I know gem crafting is a bit of a, a thing that's that Diablo has done very well. Upgrade gems to newer levels. Upgrade the tiers on them and everything else. But I believe that maybe there should be a spell gem that you can equip onto your spells. They're hard to find or, or, or whatever the case may be. But a gem that allows, for example, I've got a really, really rough example written down on here. But the Lapis Lazuli, which it basically increases your lightning damage and your lightning resistance. Imagine putting that on your spell of fireball now you're doing primary fire damage through your fireball but it also has a chance to stun it could be like a five percent chance based on the gem but you're also implementing not just damage over time through burning but the chance to stun which means you're not so much required to keep a lightning build if you're trying to be a fire mage but other than that the game as it stands right now i, I mean i did a review about this like three or four days ago i'm not too sure now although there are only 20 levels to get through Although the story is very short and there are a few bugs which is to be expected with beta, this has been one of those games I've not had a single chance of regretting any dollar that I have spent on this game. $30 Australian, great fucking game, even if it's in beta, I actually am frothing at the bit to get the full release. These are just basically little implementations, little things that I would like to see in this game. It's nothing to stab at the developers with and go, you know, I'm not going to play this game if this thing's not in it. I'm excited to see what they could do and what they will bring to the table with this game but i feel that these small little things will make my personal enjoyment levels much greater and hopefully much greater for you guys as well so as per usual thanks for checking out this video hopefully you get the gist of what i'm trying to say despite my mindless ramblings and um to the devs as well thank you once again for your community feedback thank you for creating such a great game show me that you love me hit the thumbs up button and i'll talk to you guys soon gg Thank <laughs> you.